the first question I had for you is uh, one of your your first interviews that you did uh, when you were talking about coming back is you said you took a long time off. You, you contemplated retirement. But when they put up that statue of you in your hometown, uh, you stated that if something in you triggered that there was more for you uh, to do in the boxing community and uh, with your own people. Can you kind of clarify a little bit uh, what that meant to you and how that helped you come to the decision that you wanted to come back? Yeah, most definitely. You know, before um, being presented the statue, I was probably about 85% out, 15% in, you know. Um, I just I just looked at the situation and um, uh, and I've gained so much success off of off of uh, my career and my finances to the point where I, I didn't need boxing anymore. And I was looking to furthermore focus on the things that I was passionate about that I couldn't do in between um, uh, being a fighter because um, uh, the business of boxing, she, she is a jealous um, business. And uh, it, you, know, you got to understand that it is uh, a year round um, business. And um, so you can fight year round and it requires a lot to, to, to be a fighter. To be in a business, it requires a lot of time, a lot of uh, work ethic. You had to have a strong work ethic to get in it. And, you know, being that I had the time out, I'm like, you know, I'm very successful. I don't really need it no more. So I want to focus on other things that I was passionate about. But being presented, but being presented the statue, it just it just brought a lot of enlightenment in on a lot of other things. And it allowed me to know that what I've been doing over the years, you know, the things I've been speaking about, you know, even my action as uh, as as uh, practicing what I speak, you know, have haven't went in vain. And you know, to see so many people around the world to come and and join hand in hand with me and my loved ones to celebrate with the statue, and to see so many women and men to break down in, in front of their children and to point at me and to say, "This is what." a leader is, this is what a king is, this is what, you know, this is who you need to follow. This is a true, uh, a true leader, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, just see all that, it allowed me to know that I can't stop right now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 30, I'm about to be 37 years young and I have a statue. They have given me my, my roses while I'm alive. I'm not, I'm not retiring. I'm not, old and nothing like that and I was like wow you know I, I still couldn't believe that uh they put all my uh all my all, all my uh credential everything I've done in life in, in and out of the ring has been set in stone within the statue and been presented to, to me and I had to take this moment in time I had to take that moment in time and, and, and instead of being selfish I had to you know be selfless and say, man, I, I I motivate, I inspire. So many people look up to me, especially every word that I say, they they apply to uh, uh, to their life, you know? And that's the only way you become wise, you apply knowledge to life. And that's the only way you become wise because age doesn't bring wisdom. Or you'll be considered, you know, uh, as many of us know, old fools. You'll be an old fool as well. So, um, so that moment of seeing all that occur in front of my eyes, in front of my children's eyes, that led me to know that my work is not done. I still must must continue on uh, with what I was doing, you know, being the best that I could be, providing my service to my greatness and showing the world and, and displaying it each and every time that I fight. And for that reasoning, you know, I'm back. I'm back. I only got three more years that I want to do this to the end of 40. And after that, I'm done, you know, and um, and I'm happy to uh, to to be back and I'm happy to provide my service to my greatness amongst the world. You know, what's interesting is your opponent, uh, Robert Hellenius, that's someone that you've sparred a lot with uh, in previous fights. Uh, you know, I, I felt like one of the reasons that the fight had the fights had so much buzz was there was actually some real truthful animosity between you and your opponent. Uh, with Robert, uh, you know, that's someone that you've said you have a lot of respect for. As a fighter, how do you get into that mentality when it's a guy that you don't have, like, angst for, you don't have this anger uh, for, right. you know, how do you get in that mentality that I still have to, you know, take this this guy out? Well, 
it's one of those things that is have been said either you have it or you don't you know um i'm able to uh, unfortunately for me i'm able to to uh s- switch on switch it on and off you know what i mean where i have to you know where i can be a gentleman outside of the ring and then when i get in the ring the, the unleashing the beast and um and that's what I have to do with Robert. You know, I've had it many times. You just consider, you know, you fight all the time with family. It's just like fighting with your brother or anything, you know. You know, uh, you have to know how to turn it on and off. But it's just a different uh, severeness when you step into the ring. You know, uh, Malik Scott, which is my head trainer now, I had to fight him years ago. And uh, he's, he's one of my closest, closest brothers. And um, I remember calling him one time when we was fighting. I said, bro, this is going to be the last time I talk to you. Next time I see you, it's going to be in the ring and we're going to be fighting. And after that, we can, you know, we can hug each other. We can talk or whatever. But we got to prepare for each other. And, um, and and this is what it is. And as a heavyweight, being in the heavyweight division, you understand the requirement that comes with it. And one of the requirements that come with it is that if you get close to someone, you may potentially down the line have to fight them, especially if y'all in a situation where it's a gang situation. Like this is a gang situation. I mean, we're fighting for eliminator for for a title, so this is a gang situation, and um, and we're both heavyweights, and we you know we we knew that at some point in time that we would have to get in the ring with each other. Is no, is no, you know, dodging that. That's why a lot of some guys, they don't build relationships in their division as far as making friends with guys in their division and stuff like that, because some some fighters can't turn it off to the point where this is my guy, man. I can't, I don't want to hurt him, whatever this and that. And but for me, I could turn it on and off, you know. And um, and I think that what makes uh me great in a lot of ways as well. You know, so many different things that I can do, you know, mentally. And uh, this is where we are. Although I love Robert as a, as a human being, I love his characteristics about himself as well as his uh, trainer. Every time they come down, they, they, they give their, their, their hospitality and they give their 100% full effort and prepare me for every, uh, for, for any uh, fighter that I have to face uh, during that time. But here is a time that when me and Robert has to get in the ring. Many times we've sparred many years, but this is the only time where we'll get in the ring where it, it will count for us. And hopefully he know how to turn it, turn it on and turn it off because I surely know how to turn it on and turn it off. And for that reasoning, it's going to be an amazing fight, you know. Um, so I don't want anyone to to or have the uh, the doubt or the feeling that, oh, this is not going to be a good fight because they know each other, this is a sparring partner, and they got this type of relationship. Although this is that is true to be said, but understand that Deontay Wilder, when he get in the ring, he going to give you your money's worth. You know, he's still going to have you on the edge of this seat, and you don't know what's going to happen until it happened, then boom, baby, good night. You know, you're part of the heavyweight renaissance, so I think a lot of people are happy uh, that you're back uh, because of the potential matchups uh, that can be made down the road. Like you said, when you fight, love you or hate you, uh, people are going to watch uh, because they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, excluding yourself right now, who do you feel is the best heavyweight in the division? And then therefore, who's the person that you have your eye on uh, to, to get back you know, that crown? I mean, any any of the guys that's that's at the top of holding holding belts, you know, um, has to be considered considered the best, you know, no matter what situation it is, and no matter what their record holds or whatever, you know. What I mean, you just have to go right there because you know, I got it's other guys that haven't had the opportunity to get a title or are still fighting for it. Could be better than the guys that are holding the belts, you know. What I mean, that is just uh, to be seen. You know, so I had to put it in that that situation that who has the title is uh is the best at the moment in time until uh, until uh the title has been taken up from them, and being in the heavyweight division, I understand that this division is a, a very short division that uh you know um it's going to be many many great fights made. You know, um sometimes we'll have to fight each other three four times because of the division and the um the the shortness of, of fighters that's in the division. So 
you know, um, so uh, long live the heavyweight division because the saying is where the heavyweight goes, so does uh, boxing. And it's so true. It's so true. And um, I think we got a lot of great uh, heavyweights in the division. You know, I'm, I'm back bringing the excitement back as well. And um, it's going to be some, ex, uh, ex, definitely for the next three years, it's going to be some exciting times in the heavyweight division. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of each and every last one of the big fights. You, you know, you said something interesting in, a, in another interview. And um, I think a lot of people, you know, kind of shook their head about it when you said it. Uh, you were talking about Tyson Fury and people were asking you, why did you fight him for a third time? Uh, you know, because of what you felt had happened in your second fight. And you said, why would you leave it in the hands of the authorities or the commission or anything like that when you had the opportunity man to man to go in the ring and, you know, get your justice? Uh, right. Do you feel like that chapter with Fury is closed? Or do you feel like, like you said, if he still has the belts within this last three years that you uh, want to fight, uh, that you're going to still be seeking more justice from him in the future. Oh, most definitely. I mean, that chapter will never be closed. You know, anybody that's ever cheated their way to the top, you know, especially dealing with me, that chapter will never be closed. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see the necessary need or how could you call yourself a man or anything, especially in this, uh, in this business when you have to do certain things to enhance your body or, 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 or your gloves or whatever to, to get to the top. And people got to understand and wrap their mind around, this is a business. This is not a sport. A sport is a masking agent to what really goes on in this bit. This is solely a business. Anything that dealing with the mob and is involved in it, come on, man, it's business. And it's just like in the streets. You understand with street activity come come things in the streets and you have to deal with it. You know what I mean? It's just like with this business. Certain things happen and you have to deal. You, this is what you signed up for. You had to deal with the business accordingly. And with that being said, he's not the first one to 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 try to cheat his way to the top. He's not going to be the last one when it comes to this business. And um, with that being said, it, uh, it you know, uh, it it always be a, a, a far as me concerned and dealing with him is always going to be a great fight because that animosity will ever be there. You know, I'll never forget, you know, so I know things for facts, you know what I mean? This ain't nothing that, uh, that I'm, I'm being a sore loser about, or I'm just making up and stuff like that. These are facts. When I, when I think about the business, I don't look at this as a, as, as something that you have to lie about or, 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 or you 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 have to uh, put certain things in your body to make it do what it, it don't supposed to do, because this is the business of boxing. You know, when I look at it, I look at it a gladiator sport. I look at it. That's why I'm always truthful in this business. That's why I always speak my piece, because you know it's a coward not to. You're already dealing with a a, a business that that takes lives, definitely change them for the for the better or for the worse. You know. If this was a, a sport, uh, then why in this sport, when we sign our country, we don't have certain things like sports has. Just say, for, for, instance, uh, for instance, let's say fi uh, uh, medical. You know, when, when you sign to a sport, medically, they, they support everything, even your girlfriends. I know some certain, certain uh, um, athletes dealing in basketball insurance their family don't have to pay for nothing for the rest of their lives and even when they have girlfriends they cover them as well everything we do in this business we have to do on our own even with financial situation we don't have financial people coming up to us and stuff like that telling them how we can make your money grow and all that a real a actual sports does they actual sports you get 401ks and stuff like that when it's over with, you still, you know what I'm saying? You still have money and stuff. This one, you have to be smart about your finances. You have to be smart about how you invest and who you have around you to try to invest in it. It's, it's solely a business. It's so many things that can be said. But again, this is the only business where I feel that you can be a poor man and it can make you rich in one night, one fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's the true facts of it.
I mean, which, you know, you know, it's a lot of things come with it, but, you know, it can be done, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, here we are, you know, I'm back at it. And, you know, I've been very successful in it. Um, the only people that was not in, in agreement, or they were asked, they was questioning me what I'm, what I'm, I'm doing, why I'm, I'm coming back is my financial people, which I said, well, I'm still on a high of that because that makes me smile because those are the people that you want to come to you and say, man, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> we built, we built, <laughs> we built your finances and, and invested in, in, in companies. So you won't have to do this anymore. Why are you doing this? And, you know, I had to explain my feelings and how I feel about it and why I'm doing it, you know, and uh, and here I am. So it's a great feeling to not need the business anymore, but the business needs you. Mm -hmm. I'm in a different seating, under a different position because 98% of fighters don't have it after they after it's over with. It's always the managers, the promoters, that's always still the winner when it's all said and done. That's why you have old school fighters are old greats that look like they're homeless. They have speech impairments. They they got Parkinson's. Yeah, so many things going on with former fighters. But all the things that we can remember and say, oh man, he was a hell of a fighter. He was one of the best in this time. He's on what? What does that serve when you have a whole fleet of family, a whole fleet of kids that you can't support? You can't even take. You can't even support them to go to college. Or, or, or pay for a, a, a weddings or anything like that. You know what I mean? What is it? You know, and that's one of the things that I'm so happy that I uh, I was able to uh, come on top of, you know, not too many fighters that can say to this day that they that, that they can walk away from the business and they can be straight for the rest of their lives. Deontay Wilde is one of those people with the statue mm. on top of that. <laughs> With the statue. statue. Not too now, many I'm fighters going to say they got a statue. <laughs> even now, even some of the greats can't say they got a statue. You know, but I can't say that. And uh, it's a great accomplishment for me. And um, it makes me smile. It makes my heart smile that the position that I'm in, you know.